content curation, your secret social media marketing weapon. Now that you have picked the specific sub-niche that you're going to be targeting, as well as finished doing advanced research on where your sub-niche or niche segment audiences are located on social media platforms, the next step is to find content. I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is that you stand to save a lot of money. The bad news is that you need to put in a lot more time and pay attention to details. There are no two ways about it. You cannot drop the ball when it comes to the quality of the content that you are going to be sharing on your social media accounts. Each and every piece of content you share must build your brand. This is non-negotiable. You can't just pick random pieces of content that somehow, some way, has something to do with your niche. That's not going to help you get the right eyeballs. That's not going to help you establish the kind of credibility and authority you need to eventually convert highly specific and qualified traffic from social media into cold, hard cash. What is content curation? As I mentioned above, you stand to save a lot of money with content curation. This should be obvious. After all, you're not going to be using the content that you yourself created. Content curation is all about picking other people's content and sharing those materials on your social media accounts. This creates a win-win situation. Since you're sharing links and descriptions of such content, the creator of that content gets free traffic. You, on the other hand, Get to build up your credibility because people are rewarded for following your accounts with highly targeted, highly specific, value-added content. Everybody wins. The user wins. You win. And of course, the original content creator comes out ahead. This is how it's supposed to work. You win big time because you save a tremendous amount of money not having to create a huge amount of original content. If you've ever tried to write your own stuff or outsource content creation, whether in the U.S. or to other parts of the world, it can get quite expensive very quickly. Content curation enables you to build credibility with your audience in a very inexpensive way. You use other people's content. You get to entertain them, build credibility, and gain their trust. The downside here is the time. Sure, you're not spending greenbacks, but you're definitely going to be spending time. As I mentioned above, you cannot be indiscriminate when you are trying to do content curation. Whatever goodwill you have built up for your brand will go up in smoke if people catch on to the fact that you are just randomly curating and spreading low-quality content that may have something to do with your niche. That's not going to cut it, not by a long shot. Adopt the right content curation strategy. Now that you know where your target audience members are on social media platforms, you build credibility by populating your social media accounts with highly credible, high-authority third-party content. This is called curation. In between those materials, you're going to be sharing your own original content. From time to time, you're going to call people to action to take a look at the incentives you're giving away for them to join your mailing list. This is how you play the game. When people follow you, they are rewarded with top-notch content. It doesn't really matter whether you produce that material or it was written by somebody else. Your followers get rewarded for following your account. They get niche-specific material. Eventually, you build trust with them because you only send them the very best materials. They start paying attention to your own materials. More importantly, they start noticing the content you share, which actively encourages them to sign up to your mailing list. This is the key. You intersperse your own original content. You create an impression of quality in their minds because you're sending only the very best third-party content. You then mix in your own original content, which is of the same quality as the other stuff you're sending. Eventually, they warm up to your brand, and this is where your call-to-action content comes in. You call them to action regarding the freebies you're giving away. Maybe you're giving away software, a booklet, discount codes, or even a full-blown book. It doesn't matter. You are ethically bribing them to enter their email addresses so they can download the incentive. That's how you build up your mailing list. On top of all this, when people join your mailing list, You call them to action to share the emails that you're sending them. Maybe you should ask them to forward that email to their friends. Maybe you would want them to copy and paste the material and post it on their Facebook wall. The best part. The best part to content curation is that it's very easy to automate. Seriously. This is one way of content promotion that is very automation friendly. You only need to get the URLs of the third-party content that you're curating and plug them into an Excel sheet. You then convert the file into a CSV file which is then imported by social media scheduling tools like Hootsuite and Social Oomph. You don't have to manually enter anything. You don't have to schedule everything by hand. You can do all of this through software. Isn't that awesome? You get to build credibility while at the same time minimizing work. Now, with that said, you need to pay special attention to the content quality. High attention to detail is the key. 
You have to resist the temptation of running basic keyword searches on Google or on social media platforms and grabbing anything that is somewhat related to your niche. That is a one-way ticket to brand destruction. You worked hard to build your social media brand. It really would be a shame to see it all go up in smoke because the content you're curating is very unpredictable when it comes to quality. There may be several days when you're sending the very best, cutting-edge reports on your niche, followed by a few days of just completely worthless content. What do you think prospective fans would think? Either they would think that your brand is unreliable or you're unprofessional. Whatever the case may be, you're not going to be convincing people that your brand focuses on the very best in your niche. You need to be very discriminating when you select your content. You have to read through the materials. Make sure that the content is alive, updated, and well-written. This, of course, takes time. The trade-off, obviously, is that you don't have to spend money. Regardless, you need to pay close attention to the content that you're sharing because it represents your brand. The quality it contains either makes your brand look good or erodes your brand. It's your choice. Reverse engineer your competitor's top content. In the previous video, I mentioned that you're going to have to mix in your original content. Now, the question that's probably on the top of your minds is, how do I know which content to produce? Well, there are two ways to do this, like I mentioned earlier in this training. You can try to figure out things on your own and engage in all sorts of experiments, or you can just simply allow your competitors to do your homework for you. I hope you can see which path is the easiest. It should be obvious. If you are sending the very best content on your niche, your original content must be at the same level or better. Otherwise, your followers are not going to take the bait. They're not going to trust your brand. They appreciate the fact that you're collecting all this information and they're probably going to stick around and follow your social media accounts. However, you can't count on them to do much of anything else. There's really no incentive for them to join your mailing list. Why should they? Your content is not that great. They only need to compare the kind of original content you produce with the other top-notch third-party stuff you're sharing to see your weakness. Do you see the problem here? You have to produce top content if you want your brand to be credible. Thankfully, this is easier than you think. Simply reverse engineer your competitors. Look at their most successful stuff. How do you know? Look at the social media indicators of their content. How many likes does their top content get? How many shares? Is there any other indicator that shows that this content actually has traction? Maybe you should pay attention to the number of comments for that content. Maybe you would want to run a backlink checker on a piece of content and see how many other blogs or websites link to that piece of content. This is how you measure the overall success of any single piece of content so you can use it as a template, if you will, for your own content. I'm not saying that you should rip it off. Instead, I'm encouraging you to use it as a starting point and come up with something so much better. Focus on what works. When you look at your competitors' most social pieces of content, you are basing your own original content on themes and topics that actually work. They have traction with your target audience members. You're not wasting money or time taking wild guesses. This is one of the most common mistakes social media marketers make. They think that they have the best ideas regarding hot content in their niche, so they come up with all sorts of content that they think is just plain awesome, only to fall flat on their faces. I'm telling you, for every 100 pieces of those types of original content, maybe 10 would gain any sort of respectable traction in your niche. It's too expensive, and it burns too much time. Thankfully, there is a better way. You just need to reverse engineer your competitor's most successful content. Use that as a starting point. You can adjust them. You can modify them. You can come up with your own variations. But at least you get a head start. At least you're in the ballpark when you start off. You're not just taking random shots in the dark. Learn from your own success. After you have started curating and mixing in your original content, pay attention to your statistics. They should tell you which of your content gets the most love. If you notice that a handful of your curated third-party content gets a lot of retweets, shares on Facebook, or any other indication of social media engagement, pay close attention to those pieces of content. At some level or another, they struck a nerve. They caught your audience members' attention in a very positive way. Find these successful curated pieces of content and create original versions of them. Similarly, if you have many different original pieces of content, only a handful of them will be really successful. Pay attention to those. Find them. Once you've identified them, create more of them. Focus on the same themes and present similar information the same way. The key here is to focus on what works and expand it and grow it. Ditch the stuff that failed. Build on your strengths.
Create derivative cross-platform variations of your most successful content. Now that you have a clear idea of how to create content that has proven traction, don't just keep reverse engineering it. While you need to continue doing that, you also have to do something else. Create derivative or cross-platform versions. For example, one particular type of blog post does well on all your social media accounts. Identify its themes, pay attention to its patterns, and come up with another blog post. See if that works. If you achieve the same level of success, you're on to something. This is not a fluke. This is not a one-time thing. You have struck on a theme that your audience members readily enjoy. The next step is to take things to a whole other level. Instead of just cranking out yet another blog post, create videos about that theme. Make specialized diagrams. Produce infographics. Take these materials and share them on social media platforms that specialize in those formats. For example, for blog post URLs, share them on Twitter and Facebook. For videos, share them on YouTube. For diagrams and infographics, share them on Pinterest. Drilling even deeper, look at your hottest blog posts and strip out key questions and use these as leads or titles for tweets. Tweet the same content several times over the course of a week. Of course, don't drop it all in one hour, but space them out. Still, when you use the right questions, you become very visible on Twitter. Pair these with the right hashtags. The bottom line, the great thing about content curation is you save a lot of money, but you are also positioning yourself to build on your strengths. You focus on things that you're doing right and figuring them out so that you can predictably produce successful content. Now, this is not going to happen overnight. You have to keep experimenting until you find the right themes that consistently work with your audience.